Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today I would like to tell you about sheaves yet again, because I kind of feel like sheaves is a concept which is a bit difficult and a bit scary if you see it for the first time, but it's actually not that bad. And I would like to make this running example of what a sheaf is, um, which you might not see in the standard class on algebraic geometry, but it turns out that the sheaf is kind of a very general concept and you can apply it very generously in a very general setting. And one of the easiest kind of um, incarnations of a sheaf is on a graph. And I will use that to motivate essentially everything I'm going to tell you about sheaves in this lecture series. They will be motivated by sheaves on graphs or exemplified by sheaves on graphs because it's really easy to think about them, or it's kind of nice to think about. And then the ones you see in algebraic geometry is a different variation where, well, you have different types of spaces. You're not dealing with graphs, right? So you need to have some different type of sheaf, but the idea is the same. So I feel like it comes out nicely if I just talk about the discrete version uh, of sheaves here, um, whatever that is. We'll see what that means in practice. But first, recall from the previous video, and this is a really beautiful picture that I stole. You can find the link in the description. Um, a sheaf is essentially just attaching those f of something to open subsets in a reasonable way. That's what it is. A sheaf is a way to associate data to a space such that on open subsets something is happening, whatever open means in this case. And like on little bubbles in your space, you have an attached data in a coherent, consistent way. Um, and the same idea applies essentially to everything. So just to think about a sheaf as a way to associate data to a space in a way that kind of the points of the space or whatever is important in your space gets an attached datum and there is some culpability condition when you move around in your space. That's essentially a sheaf. And yeah, that's, that's a sheaf. And now let's explore that in an example, which is super explicit. And that's why I like it. I said again, this might not be completely standard for an algebraic geometry curriculum. Um, bear with me, the algebraic geometry sheaf is essentially the same thing, just not on a discrete object like a graph. Right, a graph. Uh, my, my favorite fun story here is <laughs> essentially everyone else except mathematicians calls graphs networks, which is a much better name, by the way, uh, because graphs are kind of way too overused. Anyway, I will stay with a graph because I, I have grown up with graph. I can't change myself anymore, but I promote uh, to call them networks. That's a much better name again. Anyway, so on a network, like this guy here up here, what are the open sets on the network? Depends a bit what you want to do. But I claim the correct notion, correct in quotation marks, on open sets is you have for every vertex, you have the star open set. So you have a vertex U, and you have the star open set that contains a little bit of the outgoing edges of the vertex, like in my, my little picture up here. And same for the other vertex. And of course, you have the uh, kind of the, the bubble that covers an edge. And I call that U of E. And there will be some uh, nice intersections between them. And this kind of the picture I would have in mind. All right. Why do I do that? Because I would like to think of it as a sheaf. So essentially, what it is saying is, what is a sheaf on a graph now? Um, if I, if you believe me that these should be the kind of the open sets, well, you should attach. Oh, well, here's again the same picture, maybe a little bit nicer. You should attach a something to a vertex, and of course, every kind of star neighborhood corresponds to a vertex. You should assess something to an edge, um, and again to vertices and edges, such that there is some culpability condition. And in this case, I would like to have maps in a certain way. So let's just let's just do this here. So I'm going to do it something really simple. And it depends a bit what, what you want the sheaf to be in the end, what you're attaching to space. Yeah? And in this case, the easiest thing I could imagine attaching to a space is a vector space. So I attach, uh, let's say, a finite dimensional vector space for every vertex. So here's some finite dimensional vector space, whatever, R squared or some crap like that. Here's another finite dimensional vector space, R cubed or whatever. And here's another finite dimensional vector space, let's say R. I attach them, oh, sorry, I attach them not just to every vertex, but also to every edge, because this corresponds to the 
open sets. I hope that makes some sense. Yeah? So every vertex and every edge gets a vector space. And then you want maps, they're called restriction maps between them. And in this case, they have already just matrices. So we have a three by, so this one will be a three by one matrix, and this one will be a two by one matrix, um, because they're going from a two space to a one dimensional space, or respectively from a three space to one dimensional space. And I do it exactly in this way. Huh? So whenever uh, you have the two vertices neighboring an edge, there should be a map towards the vector space of that edge. And I do that over the whole space, right? Attaching data to space, remember. And this gives me what people call prey sheaf. Turns out in this case, prey sheaf and sheaf doesn't make any difference. This gives me a sheaf on a graph. And in general, a sheaf is type of the same thing. Depends a bit what your space is. You associate uh, something to the points. And usually what you're trying to do is in the right geometry, you have rings. So instead of a vector space, you should associate rings to things. But essentially the idea otherwise is exactly the same. And I hope this makes some sense and makes a, a sheaf a little bit less uh, mysterious. It's really just attach something to a vertex, attach something to an edge. And yeah, edge connects vertices. So maybe you want to attach a map uh, between those spaces. Can be really explicit here in this beautiful picture, just stole again. So you get a vector space for everything and you get a, a map, which is really just a matrix for the middle points, right? So I get a vector space here for the middle of the edge, if you want, here, and I get uh, the maps going like this. Yeah, that's an example. That's a sheaf on a, on a graph. And it turns out a little miracle in this case. In this case, that's a sheaf. So usually there will be a distinction between a prey sheaf uh, and the sheaf, and the prey sheaf is exactly what I just said. You attach the data to space, and then you need a few more comparability conditions, and you call it the sheaf. In this easy example for graphs, they're the same anyway. So here is an example of a sheaf. And that's what you need to keep in mind when you think about sheaves. I think that's a really cool one, and everything we are going to do about sheaves will have some really beautiful example on uh, this graph picture, which I really, really find nice. For example, the constant sheaf would be, what could that be, if all vector spaces are the same and all maps are the identities, right? We have a choice of a matrix, so I just associate the same vector space to everything and I just put the identity maps uh, on the edges, uh, sorry, on, on the interactions, so identity, identity, and I call that a constant sheaf. Makes sense, right? And what will be a constant sheaf in general, or, or in algebraic geometry, something very similar. Um, and that's uh, li literally everything you ever see in geometry, algebraic right geometry, will have some nice picture on graphs. For example, there will be something that people call a structure sheaf. Sounds very fancy, but well, it's just the easiest thing you can associate to a graph in this case. So what would be the easiest thing you can associate to a graph? Well, everything needs a vector space, so why not take the boring vector space, the one-dimensional vector space? It's the easiest vector space you can imagine. I mean, there's a zero vector space, but that's even that that's too stupid. So just the one dimensional one for every for everything. And if you have a one dimensional one for everything, you just put the identity uh, between those, which is just the times one operation. And you just put between those and whatever comes out is called the structure sheaf. And that's that's a structure sheaf. It sounds very, very complicated if you just hear the word. But in the end, it's just the easiest type of association and has this beautiful picture um, in terms of graphs, right? You could literally just do it on the graph, which I, I found really, really nice. Anyway, so there's this picture of sheaf, which is kind of a difficult to explain object, but it really is that boils down to this idea is you have a certain type of what you call space and depends on the context what that space is. But for every sub structure of that space, open sets, for example, you associate data that you want finite dimensional vector spaces, rings, some algebraic data usually, whatever it is, and have some probability between them. In my little graph example that I really, really like, I hope that's clear by now that I really like the graph example, it's really obvious, right? So you have only two types of open, of open sets, something around a vertex, something around an edge. So, so maybe you should just associate a vector space or in, this, in my example, it was a vector space. Some algebraic object to every vertex, some algebraic object to every edge, 
and then a restriction map, the compatibility map um, between them. And that's what people call a sheaf. And what I like about it, I know I sound like a broken record, but I will say it again, is that all the difficult examples, sheaf cohomology and all the fancy stuff, has some very, very explicit uh, incarnation on this graph picture. So it will be my running example for sheaves. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.